do not hold their shape very well. In order to hold your, the shape, there's another layer on top of that that's the restraint layer. That's where all the really interesting geometry and mechanics comes in because you're now effectively responsible for holding this thing that wants to become more or less a perfect sphere or a, a perfect cylinder in the shape you actually need it to be in to do what you want to do and to be able to move the way you want to move. Um, and then on top of that, um, you know, and you, have, you have various purge ports, um, not purge ports, sorry, um, but various lines running in and out. Um, you try to minimize that, obviously. You try to have them all come out of the same location. Um, and the fewer wires you can have running through this thing, the better, um, because it becomes a fire hazard, actually. So you have to, or or you can do thing, you can take measures to make various wires not be a fire hazard. Um, but you, you need, uh, if, you, if you have a cooling suit on underneath this, you need a water port, um, and you need, of course, the the, um, the oxygen port. Um, and then we come on top. So now I would like to just open it up to questions. And I'll, I will repeat them on the microphone. When's the space it can be done? <laughs> what are you going to pay for it to be done? <laughs> 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 Um, uh, so, do you have to design, well, I lost both of you guys, um, for the controls of the vehicle, I assume the pilot's going to be in this suit. Mm -hmm. So, are the controls designed such a way that can be actuated by a glove suited? Yeah, actually, uh, a couple months back, we picked up, I think it might have been that glove, or a glove just like that. I think you guys took both of them oh. to, to check. Okay, right. well, we took some gloves, mm -hmm. we used them in the cockpit, oh, the and it's actually on. remarkably <laughs> easy to still flip all the switches, but the sort of suit that Orbital Outfitters is making for X-Core is for emergency depressurization events, so it's a lot more flexible and lightweight than, like you were saying, an EV suit, uh, where it's much uh, stricter design requirements, but it's was not really a problem. Was, was the glove pressurized when you did these tests? No, they, it was unpressurized. Uh, the crucial test is going to be a pressurized suit to make sure that you can still operate the vehicle. Yeah, a lot of stuff. It's like you're not going to be changing radio frequencies. <laughs> <laughs> you're just not going to be dipping more. Like that. So you're, it's all, you're not going to be touching the shiny knobs. And, and that's the well-known pilot's thing is that in an emergency, you only mess with the shiny knobs because those are the ones that are always being touched. And in an emergency, you're going to be working a much more restricted set of controls. Yes. How do you test? Yeah, um, there are two ways to test. The easier and more economical way to test is to increase the pressure on the inside by hooking it up to an air hose, as opposed to decreasing the pressure on the outside, which then necessitates an entire vacuum chamber, which we have access to, but is kind of a hassle to get there and is, for most system tests completely unnecessary because you just need to check the pressure di pressure differential. Um, so we hook it up to uh, an air hose in the lab and alter the interior pressure. Um, the pr whoever's wearing it inside just you know pops their ears because it's like going down in the water. Um, and, and we test it that way. Uh, how much functionality is in the geometry that outer? Like I see the gray panels, for example. That's just is for stretching. All just, and is it for show or does that? Just allow us to stretch that slightly. Um, yeah, this this is a stretchier material here. This gray between uh -huh. the legs, um, and this is also stretchy here. So all of the the critical functionality as far as movement goes is in the restraint layer underneath this layer. Well, you want ketchup. Right. Well, that's because all the good stuff is. That's the, we we have the mobility that we have in this suit beats out every other spacesuit on on the planet mm -hmm. that we've you know compared it to, which is as far as I know all of them, the exception of like new things coming out of like. China or something, which I think is just a Russian suit. In which case, we're, we're good, too. Um, yeah, so, and that's that's why we're very careful with it. Actually, I have a question, since I don't work down there all the time. Yes. Uh, how difficult is it to scale it to different sized human beings? Because, you know, you've got the big, tall, six foot four pilot, and then you might have a five foot four passenger space flight participant. For IVA suits, that's reasonably straightforward. Um, because you are not trying to put, with, with EVA suits, you are either umbilical ling to the, the, the uh, craft, which is also not much of a problem. But when you look at like um, lunar surface suits or the EMUs, that requires that you are carrying all your controls with you. 
and all your interfaces with you. So unless you want to do something very strange with your, your interfaces, which for the most part you don't, there's a chunk of real estate on your chest and on your back that's the same size no matter what. And so it's to your advantage to be a big person because <laughs> then you have that much more space. And then it gets very hard to scale it up and down. Again, for an intricate hero suit, like our port right now is just right here. And this will cover most, if not all, of the needs. And that's very easy to work around. That's, that's basically nothing. So it scales in size very, very easily. So by the port, you mean that's the total interface to the piece? Um, Pressurization and everything comes through that port? Not through that one port, no. So so the, the interesting thing about spaces is the, the there's no such thing as a standard interface. <laughs> Which it has, is no fault of the spacesuit manufacturer, I hasten to add. It's because <laughs> every vehicle that they go in is different. So you're now in this position where you have to work very, very closely with the, the vehicle designer and say, okay, what is your ECLS, your environmental control life support system? What is what does your ECLS look like? What are your ECLS needs? How can we meet those needs? And in some cases, it can even get down to the, the actual, you know, not only the the um, control system and the, you know, what sort of pressure drop are you going to need across a line of X length and all that stuff. It actually gets down to the level of, all right, well, if the pilot's over here and the, the participant is on the other side and where, what's the shortest space? Okay, for the participant, it'll be on, it'll be coming out this way and for the other one, it'll be coming out that way. So you get into things like left that. Left and right handed suits. Exactly. You can do left and right handed suits. You, you might not want to. It might not be worth it. Um, it's very, very dependent on what the vehicle developer wants. I, I know Isn't that we time developing our ECLIS, we, we tried to talk to you about, mm -hmm. okay, what do you want to do? Yeah. We'll design that into our vehicle. It's kind of the reverse of, of your usual That's problem. <laughs> which, 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 which is definitely nice, although then you get into, sometimes you can risk swirl. They're like, well, what do you want? Well, I don't know. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I ask a, a broadening of that question? In your perfect world, if you did try to create something akin to a standard interface, how would that be driven? Would it require cooperation, or do you think it's just not possible given the proliferation of vehicle types? I don't think it's possible yet. I hope that it will be possible in the very near future. And I think that's something that inherently will happen as the entire industry matures, because people are going to be coming along saying, like, I don't want to spend an arm and leg doing my own custom thing. So sure. right now, the only players in the game Custom is not a problem because I don't want to say money is an object. Obviously, we're saying like it, it very much is an object, but it's not an object to the extent that they can't afford to rearrange something on a spacesuit and have us do that for them. But we are eventually going to get you know further and further down where people say we'll just match whatever you've already got, so we don't have to pay you that additional amount to develop that. And then yes, I think something will sort of naturally evolve that way. See you on the receiving end, I can say, we want you to do that. The sooner, the better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, can, we can try. I mean, it, it, it will happen. You'll, you'll do the, the back and forth thing. But, uh, <laughs> well, well here's, here's what's going to happen. Whoever comes to us first, which is, is X Core, we're going to have that ready to go. So the option is going to be like, well, you can buy the suit that we made for X Core exactly as it is, or we can make you something else. And it may be easier for them to say, okay, we're just going to do it the way, you know, x did it. And then they'll be, on their end, their ecos is going to look more like x just to, or in, in terms of the interface. So that, that's sort of how it happens. Uh, yes. Who are your competitors? Like, when you guys try to outsource this um, space to, did you do research about how many companies in the market that let you do Other than the big at Hamilton Standard and ILC Dover, and they're, you know, we got serious sticker shock. And you know, we we been you know, Chris has done the mock up suits for a long time. We had the uh, NASA contracts to work on the shoulder joints, I think. And you know, he was the, the obvious person to talk to about, you know, if, if we need a new space suit vendor, can you stand up and do this? So it was like, you know, we kind of pushed Chris and uh, the other guys into starting the company. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, it was that the that's been a large part of our problem at x -Core for years is that we didn't want to do all this vertical integration of having to design valves and design spacesuits and design this and design that. And we really like to have more horizontal integration where we're buying it from somebody else who's also good. And so steady, you know, rather than developing our own spacesuit, helping orbital outfitters stand up and become a standalone company, would any luck you guys can find other customers which will help defray the cost of the spacesuit development so that we can get them cheaper. 
<laughs> and so that you know, if you guys have a large market, that makes us part of that market and lowers our expenses. Too. So one hand washes the other. Um, there's that. Another thing that I would like to add is the, the last space at the last space up in San Diego. Someone asked me, you know, who are your competitors? And my answer was basically, at, at the level we're looking at, we don't really have any because most the people right now who are, are buying spacesuits are either the big dogs that are going to go to, you know, Dover or Sunstrand or someone like that, or they're little guys for whom that is not even an option. So we're sort of not even playing in the same, same sandbox. Like a month later, I was forced to eat my words when we were put in direct competition with Oceaneering and ILC Dover <laughs> on a, on, on a, to go for a contract. So I guess there are direct competition, competition now, which is surprising to me because I didn't think that would be the case. Yeah, it would seem that different missions would have different mobility requirements. Obviously, that suit probably got to move your hands and feet, but you don't have to jump up and down and so on. So do different suits have different designs for different range of motion? Or is it cheaper to kind of make one one suit for all or for, for being an O yet? That's a really interesting question. And well, I guess I should repeat the question. The question is, are there different mobility requirements for different suits? And the answer is, yes, there are. But that only matters when you are developing new suits. So if you have a suit that performs really, really well, actually, I take that, it, it, it only matters when you're making a new suit and or paying for a suit. So right now, both of those are happening at the same time. So yes, it matters very much. But from a vehicle perspective, if it's only an intravehicular suit, you are never leaving the capsule under any circumstances and all you need to do is, is press buttons and maybe handle a yoke or a stick and maybe work a couple pedals. You really don't need a high degree of mobility. And once once you have a suit that has a high degree of mobility, great. You know, then you can just throw it in there and then you're looking at, well, this has already been developed. We may as well use this. It goes above and beyond what we need, but that's fine. But when you're making a brand new suit, you would be paying for that extra mobility that you don't actually really need. So that yeah, that's a great question. We we actually have had to deal with that um, recently of someone saying, "Well, that's great, but we're we're we are not anticipating anyone's going to have to move like that." So that kind of doesn't do us any good. And we're like, oh, okay. So. They, they, they they wouldn't mind if it were a straight jacket. Um, <laughs> no, but, I mean, everyone wants it in the fingers, everyone wants it in the wrist, a lot of people want it in the shoulder, um, a lot of people do not care about this kind of motion at all, because no one's going to be doing that no, while there's there's also, does the helmet move, or do you move your head inside the helmet? Um, you move your head inside the helmet, so there, there are two types, there's something called a conformal helmet, which is basically a motorcycle helmet. Um, and then there's the, uh, the the dome helmet in which you move your head inside. They both have pros and cons. Um, the best thing to try and do is to have the best of both worlds without actually having an insert that now you have an extra piece that's like floating around in orbit. That's a huge hassle. So we're, we're actually working on a system that um, is the best of both worlds without being a separate piece. Does it include crash protection? Yes, it does. Who's making the uh, Virgin Galactic suit? Uh, the question is, who's making the Virgin Galactic suit? Nobody. <laughs> there was a. They are not using suits because they have this massive feat of engineering that is so gorgeous. Surely an iceberg will never hit the ship. <laughs> <laughs> But I think that's 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 kind of a mistake. And actually, maybe <laughs> <laughs> something a little smaller than an iceberg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It doesn't take an iceberg. Maybe a micro in this case. Um, but ultimately, <laughs> no one wants. To, I, I, I'm not saying up here saying or sitting up here anyway that that everyone should always have spacesuits for everything all the time. But I think when you're one of the front runners in a brand new industry where accidentally killing someone is going to not only kill your own company, but take down others with you, 
it's a really bad idea to not have backup safety systems that are readily available just because they don't look cool and kind of might ruin someone's experience or anticipation of what a luxury space ride will entail. So that CGI video they have of people floating around with fancy spacesuits with the helmets, that's yeah, just some guy that's having fun animating. That's not it, Yeah, that's just someone pointing at but I don't know what that is. Okay. So. Well, putting on the suit would be a big part of the experience. Yeah. <laughs> part of it, maybe. But it's, it's again, it's eye protected, and there are all sorts of things about when you sell it to someone. Again, it is expensive. But if, like, we're actually thinking of a systems where you just, it's, it's pretty easy to make a cover layer. So you could just be like, here's your cover layer at the end of the trip. And your name on it or whatever. Uh, yes. I just want to let you know that time's out. Wow. Okay, I need the glove back. Don't walk away with that. I think there was space for another one to keep it this going. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm kidding. Actually, no, we were trying to put gloves on the hand. Yes, but it's very hard to find. But you don't need it, but you don't need a vacuum. Yeah, I'm not going to go up against it. Yeah, no. But maybe tomorrow. Don't put your hand on it. Surely. I don't know. Well, so this is a this is a vacuum glove. Yeah. It's hers. Uh, she works at a company that A small a small company that makes spacesuits. Yeah. 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 Yeah.